What's going on everybody? It's your boy Don Fluminati back with another video. <clears throat> so in this video, I definitely owe you guys some motivation, okay? We all get caught up in our moments, right? And um the best thing to do is just keep pushing forward. You know what I'm saying? Trust me, I know this. Um, I'm not a F up as much as I used to be in life because um, I feel like I used to be one of those type of people because I used to have um, a certain mindset and once I would get in this mindset, man, it would literally take me weeks or even months to get out of that same mindset because I constantly would feed myself, right? These things that we keep on our own minds, right? Regardless if it's a, a righteous anger or not, um, you still got to put it away the very next day. You know what I'm saying? So that means when we wake up, you know, I've crucified my flesh. I crucify my flesh before I go to sleep. Because I feel like if I ain't do something right, you feel me? I just talk to him. That's it. <laughs> I don't really need to talk to y'all. But what I want to talk to y'all about today is um staying on grind and um, you know, uh reaching your goals. You know, keeping focus on your goal, right? Because a lot of us, and I'm talking about the, the, the children of God and the ones who want to make it into the kingdom, right? A lot of us, we don't set out goals and we set out plans, right? And we had this strong feeling. Let's say, let's say, let's say this is all on a wave. Let's say we all on the same wave, right? Let's say about three weeks to a month ago, we had this strong feeling to just literally cut everybody off, right? No, that's an energy, right? You see the energy they got. Now we have our energy, right? And um, because, you know, I think I like it this way. I think I really like it this way because it's almost like, all right, when you hear these familiar conversations going on out there, you can't just go and assume that people are prophets now, okay? Because we didn't realize that we all going through the same shit. So I can literally get up here and tell you what's been going on around the li my life, right? And somehow... It, it may not um, it may not go parallel or correlate with many, but for the ones who are like minded, the ones who already reached out, um, this is where we at. Right. So this is how I see things. Um, so we wanted to clear these individuals out of our life um, for the most part so we can gain um, our in, our ourself. You know, what I'm saying the energy of us because we need that right now. We need that. And a lot of uh, a lot of us need that for our road. To Damascus or the, the road to Damascus, the ones who's on that Damascus road uh, right now, let's say, right? Um, these are the individuals that I'm saying, because somehow we all on that Damascus road, but these are the ones that I, I want to um, make sure that you're keeping your focus out there because if you can't see it, I can see it, but it's the orchestrations, man. It's almost like every single minute of your day. It's, it's just like things is just so on point sometimes, right? You know how you be talking and um, you may you may be trying to, let's say, um, explain yourself to someone, right? Then you go to change the channel and boom, the algorithms just said what you needed to say. Have y'all been experiencing that lately? Because I know I have literally for the last couple of years and I can see patterns out very well, but I've never really seen it happen like this. Um, another thing is, um, you know, before this pandemic and before things really got crazy on this earth, right? It seemed to it seemed to you that, you know, your progress was worth a little bit more back then. Your value, right? It was like you would go out to do things, right? You would plan things, you would plot things, and it would tend to work out as long as you work towards them, right? It doesn't seem to be the same way anymore, correct? Okay. But don't let that distract you from your goal. The reason why you're on a path right now is to take you to that goal. That's why when you had that feeling and let everybody go and you, you got on a certain path, right? You're now in a position where you're moving straight. And let's let's say the obstacles have not jumped in the road yet. You literally just got on this road, okay? So you got to understand we're in a season now, okay? And it's going to be many obstacles, Remember, this is the Damascus road. But if you lose focus, you're going to you're going to you're going to stumble over every single obstacle. First of all, you don't know when it's coming, where it's coming and what's coming. You see what I'm saying? 
and everything that's getting ready to come into your path right now is to literally deter you from that path, to distract you off the path, to demotivate you. But the only way to go from here is backwards. You could take a sneak peek because ain't nobody turning in no pillars of salt right now. Take a sneak peek and look back right now. You, 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 can, you can visualize what you're getting ready to see happen. You can almost assume that it's up for destruction, okay? So at least that it's on the back of your heels. You see what I'm saying? Because you've been moving forward for some time now, right? But let me tell you how this, um, this road, it tries to catch up to you. It's almost like every single step you take. And this is almost like one of the visions that I've seen of us we're standing before God literally right now, right? And we're on a platform and we're all in a line. There's like, I don't know, maybe this this platform, this, 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 this road, it's literally like a bridge or something, right? And it's coming out of darkness. It's a clear bridge. And in front of you is just like black, but bright lights. It, it, it's it's hard to it's hard to explain, but it's like it's all black in front of you, but there's a shine of a bright light. It just shines on you, shines on the people, and it shines on that glass platform, right? And this is what I've seen. The glass platform is like this thick. It's made out of like Tetris bricks. And every time we take a step, these bricks are falling from beneath, from, from literally off the edge of our hill, falling. So what it tells me and what it showed me is if, if you even slow down right now, you, you, can, you, can go, you can go down. You understand what I'm saying? And regardless if you go backwards or you stay stagnant, with these bricks, these bricks is just falling, regardless. The fact that we've been moving, you wouldn't notice what bricks is falling behind your feet in the spiritual realm. You understand? So if you start to tend to slow down a little bit or you stop progressing as much, you have no idea if you're going to be in a hole or not. You see what I'm saying? I want to try to uh, keep people out of the hole and I want to keep them on that righteous path. Because like I said, as I see it, we're living in two different forms right now. You know, there there is a war taking place in the spiritual realm, but there's also judgment be taking place in the spiritual realm as well. See what I'm saying? And we are here living out judgment day. Our spirits is up there and we're literally like different people. We're like, all right, we're like clones, bro, down here. But we're not really the originals. The originals is up there, but they can get canceled. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, um, like if I was to dub a file, right? And you know that's the shortcut file. We're the shortcut files. The access from the main file is up there. You see what I'm saying? Um, if we're not, if we're not in guidelines, uh, the things that you know God wants from us, right? You know, it, it almost seems to me that He's. It's almost like the Matrix, and your file can be deleted, or you can go. Uh, I don't know what it, I won't know what to say. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be metaphoric about it. I would say like incognito mode, but it looked like these people in this black room was in an incognito mode. But I only I only say that because for the ones that God poured out a strong delusion on, okay, these people they haven't fell from the bricks. When the, the strong delusion is placed on you, you already in a realm of darkness. So you've already pretty much fallen. They didn't have to fall. When the strong delusion was put on them, they just, their spirit, their spiritual spirits end up in this black room and they just, they're just a black shadow. These people who have a strong delusion on them, like up there, we got faces and stuff and color and everything. And the ones with a strong delusion got a black shadow, but they're still living down here, got faces and color and everything, but their spirits have been all blacked out. That's what I saw. But I'm telling you because, um, Somehow these goals that we need to get to is the path that's going to take us to the kingdom of God. He's going to bring that to us where we can have the heaven on earth as well. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because um, it, uh, what it says, our father who art in heaven, how be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So that could be judgment day, that could be war, that could be everything, bro. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this dare daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. You know what I'm saying? And to those that um, it, that we didn't forgive, you know what I'm saying? So that's a very important thing right now. Um, if you're on that road and you've already let, let's say, certain individuals go, right? Forgiveness is going to be a big thing because 
a lot of these people that you felt you had to disconnect away from, you 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 felt like it was building up some tension. And you couldn't have got you could have got a little bit more angry about it. The thing is, if you hold on to unforgiveness, you're not gonna have that peace in your heart. And without the peace in your heart, the love of God in your heart can't grow. The spirit of God cannot manifest as well. We need the spirit on you. Mind you, the closer you walk to worship, the more you're supposed to have that on you. Now, the reason why some people may not is because they still got little people, you know, tagging along here and there. And at this point, all it does is just slow you down. That's what demons do. That's what demons do. I, let me tell you about selling crack deeds back in the day, maybe over 20 years ago. All right. I done sold different things, pills, crack, weed, you know what I'm saying? Never so dope, nothing like that, right? But um, the fact was, when I was selling crack, I used to wake up in the morning with little thetans on me. I call them thetans. Same thing as a demon, right? In the in between, I think it was maybe my second stage of sleep, literally, I can see and hear everything. So I literally got to do, literally, my body ain't up yet, but my head from out of my spirit can just lift up and look around my room. Dead serious, like all the time, dog. And what I could see was little tiny demons that was all little all around them waking me up since five o'clock in the morning on my shoulders. It's not like they're like trying to scare you. All demons are not trying to scare you. As a matter of fact, I don't think any of them are trying to scare you. Their presence is so dark that it'll give you a fear. You understand? The bigger they are, the bigger the presence. The smaller they are, the more aggravating, annoying. I'm telling you, these little niggas is just jokers, bro. But the small ones, they will wake you up laughing and, and laughing and they're laughing at you. And you know they're laughing at Why are they laughing at you? Why is there so many of them all around you and you can hear them all laughing at you? You know that you're doing something wrong. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So um, I, I knew that. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it because I, st I knew God at that time as well. Mind you, like, I wasn't, a, I wasn't a stranger to being brought up in the church. My mother, my father, I think at that time, my father was probably even a pastor at the time, if not a deacon. But at the same time, I wasn't it wasn't strange to me. The word of God, um, his discipline. So I knew better. I've been knew better. I didn't know as much as I knew now. But um, it was like, you know, you know, by having the lack of knowledge can cause you to play with God a little bit more than you really want to. And um, because you don't you don't know what's in there. You don't know what you're doing half the time. Like there's some things that we done did on this earth that could literally could be considered witchcraft for a lot of us, for a lot of us. And I want to say a lot of people No, you didn't intentionally try to do it. But there's things on this earth that you have done before in manipulative ways to get something for your benefit. That was witchcraft. Now, if you did anything like that, that's what that is. Like the good luck things. I used to do weird stuff. Like I really don't want to say, it, but I used to say, "Oh, you put something into a dollar. You put some of the, the drugs in a dollar, and you fold it up, and then you hold it there, and then money will come." Strangely, it seemed to work. The bigger the bill, and you put it in there, the more it came. So you took that one dollar bill, and then you took that one dollar, and you put it in a fifty, and then you tied that fifty up and just sat it there. Fifty times the amount. Was showing up in the in, in in my in the process that got me so far that became something I, I never expected but then it got to a point where it was like are you gonna step up or are you gonna step off and I knew it because I, I was tripping and I prayed God was protecting me I prayed to God for protection and he did protect me but I think I made a mistake and I prayed for a better deal on, you know what I'm saying? I literally prayed to God to get me a better deal on the sun. You know what I mean? And guess what happened? A better deal came. Like, I can't remember if it was the same day, but I say within a 24-hour period. I'm talking about your man's was going from paying 12, 1200 for a joint to like 250 And it was real. It was real. I already went out and got a few of them just to, for the test, right? It was crazy, right? So I'm looking at this 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 step up, cause now my order's supposed to be bigger, right? And I'm like, look how I got here. Now was the moment when I wanted to realize 
that I've been doing things that I probably shouldn't have been doing. And there's no way that these prayers is doing that. Because I know God ain't doing that. You understand? So that was literally the devil intercepting my prayers and put that right on a platter for me. So when it was time for me to get this crazy deal that I could have literally took off with, I looked at it and I turned my back on it forever. I never wanted to be in that midst of that realm of that. You understand what I'm saying? Because trust me, I, I knew it was something behind it. And, and besides the fact, every week it was always something. And if I multiplied what I had made, or if I multiplied my moves or my actions, everything else had multiplied too. So if there was cats getting shot at or going to jail or, you know, anybody from the clicks or whatever, that's what's happening double or triple, depending on how I was moving. So here I am about to come and go grab this big and I'm great. I'm about to put this on them. I know that a lot of bad things is about to happen out of this. I wasn't going to have that on my responsibility. It was getting deeper and deeper. As I, as I, as I, yo, you talk about in too deep. When you become a kingpin and you accidentally became a kingpin, nigga, you in too deep, bro. Because now you're at a point where a lot of people rely on you that was hungry before. And now all you see is smiling faces when these used to look like wolves. They might look like the wolves or everybody else, but when they see you, they're smiling and it's genuine. You understand? And we also understand about feeding the wolves too. You feel me? Because mind you, I, I, I didn't know none of these cats. I was a homeless nigga and then I came up. Then I ended up putting a lot of them from off the streets. That was literally the only ones I could trust. I put on all stick up kids. Every last one. Every last. If you want a stick up kid, I wasn't I wasn't fronting you no packs. You hear me? So um I was doing certain things like that, but it was to be into my benefit. But when you're constructing certain things, and you're trying to make things happen, you're trying to cheat in life to make things happen for you, man, that's witchcraft. It doesn't matter if you're just trying to manipulate a person. You're trying to manipulate anything for your benefit. And you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not holding the most high, the most high as your um your go-to. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Put him first. Then I'll, you know, search the kingdom of God, then all things will be added. When you out there constantly running for money, you ain't really worrying about the kingdom of God. You worrying about your progress and how much you're gonna get done and how much money you're gonna make. And y'all roads that you're on right now, you can't worry about how much money you're going to have in a month or two months from now. You got to concentrate on today and at least tops tomorrow. Yes, be building to work towards your future. But like I said, things has not been the same with the aura of energy as far as progression and your, the value of your progression has changed in these days. Why? Because y'all up for a real challenge now. It's the real challenge. It's the challenge that God was never going to allow you to get. Because remember, what he has for you is for you. It ain't for nobody else. So if you wonder why you've been um, isolated or even for the moment or recently, let's just say, right? Recently, a lot of people are, let's say, disfiguring. Um, they're making space for each other. And, 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 and if you couldn't do it, God did it, right? What your, uh, what your job is to do is to not turn back and to pull these fish that you just threw back in the sea. Don't pull them back on the boat, cuz. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because if you do, this time, you will lose. This time. You may have done it several times, thinking and hoping that it will play in your favor, but it didn't. It just gave you a disconnect anyway. Hope is another thing that God hates. A lot of people don't understand this, but I heard this from the people in my dreams because I travel. I'm going to tell you like that. I can tell you my dreams is real because deep cats got real information that's on our planet. And I come, I wake up all the time and I look stuff up on Google and I'm like, dang. Like, where are these people at? And I can never get back to them because, you hear me? Like, I'm going to end up somewhere else. But on some real time, more people will tell me something else. And, and bro, there's people out there that know things that's in the dream world or some shit, cuz. So, not only do I hear from Christ, yes, I do. But there's people in some other dimensions, bro. I, I don't know, man. I, it's got to be real. How the hell they know real information? Whatever, bro. Anyway, they said that God hate hope. So these people, I don't know how. It's like, 
All right, whatever. They said God hates hope because hope is what keeps most people tied to their sins. Yeah, that's one of the that's that's the, that's one of the sins he hates the most. The most. Why? Because it'll keep you tied to all the deadly sins because you got hope versus faith in God. You ain't searching the kingdom of hope. When you got hope, hope is something that you're hoping for. Something um, carnal. Hoping that it's something that you, you're going to do. Because you can't hope for God to do anything. You got to have faith that God will do. Hoping. If you hope that God going to do something, that's like, you're like, what? What do you mean you hope? Like, 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 like if he can't do it. See what I'm saying? So um, that hope is not as strong as you think it is. Because if you apply that to God, I mean, he, look out, look out, look, look, look at hope versus faith. Faith without works is dead. And faith is a substance of things hoped for, hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen. But it, the hope is just a substance. You see what I'm saying? You get caught up in the substance, then... That's a that's a carnal thing. That's literally something that you're gonna try to achieve to make happen. So they told you that. They didn't say hope was faith. They said faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. That's why they didn't just tell you hope. They they, they explained what faith is because faith is uh leaving it in God's hands. Hope is hoping that you can get it done. I don't I don't I don't know if you understand that correctly, but just remember, don't ever hope for nothing. Don't don't just hope this is gonna happen. Pray about it. Have faith. Work towards it. You feel what I'm saying? Don't just hope. Hope is it's, hope is like having a handout. I just hope somebody's gonna give me something. Versus having faith but working in it. And then having that faith as you're working in it. Because I know they say faith without works is dead. But let's say um I want to add, because we're not adding to the Bible, but what if you flipped it? Work without faith is dead as well. Come on, man. What are you trying to get done? Do you believe you can do it? Are you going to put it in God's hands to get it done? See, that's the faith that you need. That's not hope. Because the moment that you realize that you can't do these things anymore, he's trying to show you, it ain't up to you no more. He used to let us play that little story where we had a thought and an idea and we could go out there and hope for some shit and make it happen on our own. Yeah, the world was playing like that. But now the world ain't playing like that because God ain't playing like that no more. He going to make you need him. See? So, don't need hope. Keep the faith. Stay on the road. Dodge the obstacles at any given, at any given chance, right? But take your time off too. Take your time off for prayer. If you could fast even one day a week, that's good. That's good, bro. I'm going to tell you like that. You know why? Because you don't have to fast that much. The fasting is, is, a, is a, if you could do it in a consistency, if you did it every single week, then you wouldn't have to fast for three days every here and there, dog. Like, dog, trust me. Like, you, you good. You good. Um, Because, see, what you're eating through the week, you could at least get your body that one day to rest, reset, drain all the toxins out. If you so happen to do eat anything, let it be fruit. Let it be vegetables. You feel what I'm saying? But um, just eating nothing, eh, that's... Mm. Listen, you can eat fruit with a fast, cuz. I'm going to tell you, that, that, that's got to be... Pineapple's got to be the best thing you can eat on a fast, cuz. And, and you're saying, well, fast is... I'm not supposed to eat nothing. No, bro. No. Do you have any idea what a fast is really even meant for? It's to take the toxins out of your body. So if you're eating things that destroys toxins, like... Pineapples because it got enzymes in it. I mean, that's the perfect thing that you want to sit. So say don't eat all day, right? And then before night, eat some pineapples just to sit in your stomach. Just to sit in your stomach. You're you're you're, you're turning your that one day fast into like a three day fast. Just off of that, cuz I'm telling you, because you're, the, the purpose is to drain out toxins in in in, in uh, bacteria that's not supposed to be in your body. It slows you down. If your if your if your body is slowed down, then how much can you really move when the spirit gets to move, right? Because you know you don't know what he wants you to do. You don't know how much longevity may be in it. You don't know how much stamina you may need to have to go through certain things. Imagine the people who was with um, Moses, right? You had old people, 
had to walk all those miles and, and to get away for their life, right? But what if somebody was helping that community structure their balanced diets very well? And you know what I'm saying? You might have had some people that might have didn't make it because they couldn't go along. And then when you can't go along, now somebody, you're dead weight. You're dead weight. And right now, it's like he's calling us all to be strong because we're not supposed to be dead weights on each other. And nobody's supposed to be a dead weight on you. At this very time, we are supposed to be trusting in God and him. And that is it. That is it. And remember, whatever he has for you is for you. So don't be expecting anything from anybody else. No handouts now. This ain't about hope, remember? And if you're going to have faith, don't put it in yourself. So if you're still trying to figure out why things ain't happening, it's because you still got faith in yourself. You're still trying to make things happen. It's not going to go that way, bro. It's like, let's call it the universe now when we say they're playing against you. As soon as you think you that boy or you that girl, and you start talking like you big, tough Tony, and you can get these things done, look, if you somehow ever to get it done, you have realized you should have started here and not here. Because now it's getting ready to put a load on you for talking that ish. You, you, you said you wanted this, right? You said you wanted this. Every single one of us needs it. But there's things that y'all said y'all want. Well, y'all went a little bit more exclusive than you may have understood. Because you got to mind yourself. When you're dealing with God, you got to be very specific on what you're asking as well. So even in your prayers, when you say, Lord, please make me stronger. You may be feeling like you're weak at the moment when you say something like that, right? So if I had to go to the gym and I went to a gym trainer and he said, if, somebody, if I was a gym trainer and somebody asked me, hey, make me stronger. I'm like, all right. Well, what you benching? Oh, I'm only benching like 100 pounds right now. Okay. Well, um, how many reps can you hit? Well, I can get about 8 to 10. Okay. Well, how about we try 115 pounds today? Even if you could get five reps in, that fifth rep going to be hard. It's going to be hard every time until you can get that 115 to 8. That's, that's literally how you're going to get stronger. So he's just going to put more weight on you. You understand what I'm saying? So when you ask God, God, Lord, please give me strength. Lord, make me stronger. Um, <clears throat> I stopped saying things like that a while ago. A while ago. A while ago. And guess what? I still became stronger. That didn't ask for it. You understand? Because I realized, because <laughs> I'm trying to help y'all. I, I realized you better be careful what you're praying to God for. He will give you what you ask for. <laughs> but you don't know because you're not understanding what you're saying to him sometimes. So, um, you know, how you want to say that if you feel like you need strength from God, you know, just tell him to pour in his spirit into you. Just ask him for that. Ask him for that. Because that right there, you know his spirit strong already. So don't go burying yourself with things because he's going to see your heart as soon as you say it. And he's going to see how weak you are. And, and he's going to test you more than you would have ever tested yourself. But then that's where the Bible says the guy, he wouldn't put no more on you than you can bear. Now, I don't know what to say about that because he'll have you on the brink. Sometimes you'll feel like you on edge. You know, and everybody around you that some people keep around them, they just keep poking you and poking you and pushing you and pushing you. As if they're really expecting you to fall off the edge. And then here and there, you can clearly hear that they want to push you off the edge. Clearly. So what do you do? You find a way out. You find an escape, right? Because the pattern and the things that we're getting ready to go through, there is no way out. These roads that we have to take, there's no way out of that. But there's also no way out of individuals pushing you to your demise. And when I say to your demise, I'm talking about they're going to push you all the way because a person can only take but so much. And let's be honest, we ain't really standing on an actual edge. We just feel a, a broken spirit inside that we feel like if we lose that, we will not have no longer control of us like we're going to lose all sanity. You ever felt so insane in a moment, in a moment, that you just felt like your head could just explode, your heart could just explode, you could just explode. You feel this pain in your, in your stomach. 
and it's been tight for years and you holding on and you trying to wait for your moment to exhale. When? When? Yo, I still be feeling like that, cuz. Do you understand that feeling? It reminds me of two times in my life. And this is why I've been saying this. One of the times is when I was locked up in jail. When I'm, when I'm locked up, that's how you feel in there. When you're institutionalized, there's this, there's this grip on your stuff because you're not really free. That's what that is. That's, that's lack of freedom, cuz. And why are you lack of freedom? Well, I said, man, it's going to take some time before this weight down there starts to release itself. But you can't have any other energies around you because you got to build out that energy. It, it ain't got you down to this point, right? To a seed. A seed is this small. So it was a seed planted into you. And now you got to make sure it grows. You can't still be in the seeding process. It, you got to be in the nurturing process right now. This is what these videos is for. This is why I would tell you to read up on your Bible as much as you can. If you pray as much as you can, listen. Even one time a day, bro. Even a few minutes. Or, you know what I'm saying? Whatever you could do. Uh, it'll help keep the demons away. You know, eventually. No, I'm going to tell you like this, right? When you pray, they're going to come. Okay? Okay? But the thing is, when they come, you pray again. You hear, you hear me? Because if you just let them stand, dog, they, you pray and they come to test you. They come to test your faith out. Cause you, so don't think that just because you're about to pray, shit just going to open up. No, nah, I don't work like that. When you pray, there's the obstacles. Now, you got to pray them out the way as every step forward that you're moving. You understand what I'm saying? Otherwise, remember, the bricks is coming from beneath the, the heel of your foot. So you got to keep moving anyway. We don't have time to slow down. We don't have time to be stagnant. I see things in the spiritual room that I really see it, that's happening. And it's like, if that brick catches your foot, I'm telling you, you know what? I feel like what you're going to be hit with, you're going to end up in that other room with them strong delusion mugs. This ain't even about, you ain't even got to slip and fall. All you got to do is just be stagnant. There's no time to be stagnant in this road. You understand what I'm saying? Um, we're not running from anything, but we're moving towards something. A greater goal than you even panned out for yourself. But you're going to see that goal on this road. And before you know it, you know, past it. Now you're looking at what? You're looking at the inheritance of God. The real inheritance that he got for you. The real re reward for everything. Everything you've been through. You understand? Well, your goals is going to be so many steps away compared to what God has for us. But as long as we on that road. We're there to get what God has for us anyway. Because what you believe, you have no idea. You know, you have no idea the value that he values us at. So, you know, consider yourself in a fighting position so you can get to your road to riches and glory by Christ. So, I want to make sure that, um, that I'm getting everything that I'm trying to hit on everything that's coming to my mind because, um, I'm a very deep thinker. I'm a, I'm a deep thinker. And when certain thoughts click, I say, you know what? Even if it's not as much or it may not be as potent as a message, I feel like I, it's, it, I still got to bring it to your attention because it means something. It means something and it's, and it's helped for something because, first of all, not many people is doing it. So, like I said, you know, and I got to apologize, you know, here and there. Like I said, man, I may get a little amplified uh, or compassionate when I'm speaking about things, but that's literally everything, you know what I'm saying? So, yes, it may be subjects that I may speak on that have nothing to do with me at all. And some people might be like, yeah, well, you sound like you're, I'm like, dog, that, that ain't even me. But because I see it so well and I can uh, come up with a conclusion because I can dissect these things very well. And, um, and then once I start expressing it, I mean, come on, man, it comes with an expression. And some people just do it differently. Um, the, the reason why I feel like it'd be a little bit of tension behind it is because a lot of times when I'm speaking on certain things, I've heard so much backlashing and flack that I can literally hear what the people are getting ready to say next. So that's why sometimes when I be talking and you're like, yo, dang, why do you just get hyped? I'm getting hyped for the people who had the stupid thought in their head to say something that you wasn't going to catch. That was literally going to be stupid as shit to me. You know, you know what I'm saying? So when you see me doing that, I'm not really falling off and I'm not getting sidetracked, but I'm talking to individual trolls and all that that I know sitting there. 
You, you understand what I'm saying? And that's why they'll pin their way on. They, they already understand how the, the messages are. You feel what I'm saying? So we ain't doing it for them. We're doing it for y'all. Um, so I do try to keep, you know, a mix of that. But then you also have uh, people who are not fully equipped with the word of God. I ain't saying that I am. But I'm noticing things that I see. A lot of people, they're not equipped with that. And, and you know, that, it's, it's, it's a problem to me. So, you know what I mean? I feel like if it's a problem to me, God ain't tell me, yo, don't worry about it. He would, I swear he would have been told me that by now. You feel me? He ain't tell me nothing like that. He's still showing me things to tell y'all. So, like, come on, man. Let's, let's all act like th these things is in the Bible. His structure, his discipline, his authority. Okay? And he gave his authority to the men. Okay, yeah, I got. I pull the scripture up for you. I can pull the scripture up for you where it tells you, um, the ministers, the ministers of God is the ones who he has. He uses them to carry out his wrath and his vengeance. It's in the word. It's in the word. So you know what I'm saying. And it's not. It's not for me to just keep putting that out there because oh man, you just wanna. You just wanna do some wrath, like bro. If I had nothing to do with all this shit, I'd just sit the fuck down, bro. I know that we got something to do with this because he been woke me up like 21 years ago cuz telling me we're gonna be at war cuz so I don't care what you think you heard or you think you know and all this other stuff yeah we still gonna do that I'm still at business I ain't worried yet my nigga come on man we still out here living civilized yes we are but it ain't no escaping what's to come so I just want to remind you of that and I want to continue to bring y'all every single chapter so y'all know that there is a war on the verge now the spiritual war in heaven, my nigga, right down here. Like y'all niggas can't see, cuz you telling me you don't, you don't, you don't get when the whole world is up against a certain group of people. What do you think's gonna happen? I can tell you what'll happen if I was dumbed down and docile like you niggas, right? Nothing. We go back in slavery. That's what'll happen. But instead, he ain't take the spirit out of everybody, man. We still here, cuz. So guess what? We still got a job to do. You hear? And y'all still gonna see it regardless of... You gonna be so pissed off when you find out that God had a war for us to fight and you didn't sign up because you went to play, talk the soldiers down this, down, and third. He gonna knock y'all right out the way. You will not get none of the rewards that we gonna... I don't even know what you gonna do with y'all. You hear me? But I'm gonna tell you like this. Because you ain't decided to put your boots on and you didn't listen to the most high and his discipline we told you was going to happen. Revelation 19 said he's going to judge you off your works. He ain't say your sins. He said your works. What work did he ask us to do? The last thing he told us to do was in Revelation 18, as a matter of fact. So in Revelation 19, it told you he's going to judge you off your works. So what was the last work he told us to do? Actually in the Bible. It's so close to that scripture. The last thing he told us to do was repay Babylon. Double than what she paid unto you. That's what he told us to do. So which one of y'all want to repay Babylon? Because the, the last I checked, the very next thing he said he was going to judge us all to getting into the kingdom was our works. Now, if you're a man of God, what kind of work are you supposed to be putting in? I don't know. I mean, if you're putting in work, you're putting in work. He won't judge you off of that. That's just simple. But somebody might have this work and because these people want to tell me, oh, you're not God. You're, and who told you this, that? No, nigga, I'm at work. He going to judge me off that too. And that's my way in. Did you hear me? So if it don't got nothing to do with you, fall back out of that. Or go freak the fucking scriptures, man. Because I, 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 at this point, we're going to put that thing down. We're going to be preaching to y'all. What's what, what, what going to happen when we in the midst of the war? You still gonna be like, no, you can't do that. Bow. Can't do what? Can't do what? You hear me? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just keeping it a beam with you, Doug. I'm keeping it a beam with you. Because I'm gonna tell you like this. If, if I ain't one of them people that is saying that's in that Bible, and it's what's gonna be happening in the last days, when he said he looked at the tribe of Judah and they were doing exceedingly great in the war. So you got him up here talking about a war his damn self, nigga. Huh? I'm, I'm, look, that's why I said a lot of people is going to perish because they have the lack of knowledge. Just the lack of it. God know your heart, but you still was, you chose to be dumb as shit, bro. You chose to disregard the word, period. Period. If I told you it came from the Bible, look it up on Google. I'll give you scriptures. But you choosing to ignore that.
So you the one that don't want to see that there. You don't want to respect his authority and who he gave it to. Sound like a woman to me. Or if you a man, then man up and know your position. Understand that our community need help with this. And God, come on, man. He don't need none of us. But he relies on every last one of us. Why you think that he would make preachers? Huh? Because if God would have did everything himself, then why he sent his son? Why he ain't sent himself? You understand? Because we support him. And he does ask us to do things, including die for him. You heard? So if you don't understand this God, I don't know who y'all understand. Till next time, stay on your toes, man. Keep your goals alive. It's your boy Don Columnado. Peace. One love.